वेलकम व्यूअर्स एंड टूडेज टॉक इज अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू ग्राउंड वाटर एंड दिस रिलेट्स टू द कोर्स बी जी वाई सी टी वन थ्री वन ऑफ जियोलॉजी बी एस सी जी प्रोग्राम एंड माई सेल्फ एंड प्रोफेसर भास्कर फ्राम स्कूल ऑफ साइंसेस आर हियर टू टॉक अबाउट दिस प्रोग्राम और ऑन द टॉपिक इंट्रोडक्शन टू ग्राउंड वाटर तो ग्राउंड वाटर बिफोर गोइंग टू द ग्राउंड वाटर एंड अवर प्लानट एर्थ इज नोन एज द वाटर प्लानट एंड इन दिस प्लानट वी हैव ओनली द थ्री परसेंट ऑफ फ्रेश वाटर इन दिस फ्रेश वाटर द ग्राउंड वाटर अकाउंट्स टू ओनली नाइंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल फ्रेश वाटर अवेलेबल आफ्टर द टोटल ग्राउंड वाटर विच इज बींग एक्सट्रैक्टेड इट इज मोस्टली एटी used for irrigation 9% for domestic purposes uh, 2% for industrial usage and uh, in this also th for the domestic usage we have the water usage 81% in the rural areas and 50% in the urban areas and uh, about the over extraction of the ground water uh, there is possibility that by 2025 there will be the scarcity of ground water and one third of the population will be suffering because of this uh, ground water shortage so coming to the uh, topic about the ground water today's topic about the ground water what is ground water ground water is uh, nothing but is the water which is formed when rain water infiltrates to the ground and moves downwards uh, into spaces and cracks in the rocks below the ground surface so important aspect of this ground water is the water table because everyone says that the water table has gone down so water table refers to the upper limit of surface of ground water so next is the important topic that is about the characterizing the aquifer character 6 it is uh, terminology related and this for this professor Bhaskar sir will be telling about this. Uh, thank you, uh, Prashant ji, for giving the introduction. And uh, uh, there are two terms which we have to remember. One is the porosity, and second is the permeability. Porosity refers to the number of pores per unit volume. It is the pores. It is given in percentage. And permeability means how fast it moves through the pores. There can be a rock which is porous but not permeable. now i will show you the diagram if you see this uh, slide there are three categories one is no pore spaces it is non porous and non permeable second one you can see it is porous uh, but non permeable and third one is porous and permeable simple example you can take of clay clay can be porous but the permeability is very low if you take the sandstone it can be porous as well as permeable and there are other important things which we have to understand in terminology which is called an aquifer now what is aquifer it is the formation in which water is uh, available and it is both uh, permeable uh, the property of that uh, formation is it is having permeability as well as porosity and when we talk of the term aquicloud it means that cannot transmit water through it and if you say the term aquifuge that means it cannot totally transmit uh, the water it, uh, neither porosity nor permeability nothing it blocks everything so what are the different aquifer types one is it is called unconfined and second is called confined what is the difference between the two in the case of unconfined it is uh, the upper uh, limit of that uh, water body is not having Uh, an impervious layer confined means both top and bottom of that flowing uh, ground water has the impervious layer so the confined one is bounded by impervious or semi impervious layer whereas unconfined one is not having the upper uh, part having confined bottom one is uh, having the impervious layer that is called water table aquifer or phreatic aquifer now there are three functions of an aquifer what are those one is storage capacity storage coefficient second is the transfer capacity transmittivity and third is the physical and chemical interaction 
capacity which is there. So these are the three factors which are important uh, to understand about the aquifer. Now the avail availability of groundwater depends on the geological environment. It has a major role. For example, aquifer unit storage capacity varies extremely between unconsolidated granular sediments and highly consolidated fractured rocks. Groundwater flow potential depends on the aquifer saturated thickness and type of aquifer layers. Now I will request my colleague Dr. Prashant to explain why groundwater is so important and what are the different hydrological environments associated with the groundwater. Thank you for the introduction about the aquifer properties which are more related to the groundwater. So now important, uh, what is the importance of groundwater? So we can say that it is a source that is readily available because at the point wherever you drill the water or the uh, or a well, you will be getting the water and it is it's relatively low cost compared to the surface water and its availability in most of the areas. And uh, other thing is it is pure and portable without any treatment. And uh, for extraction it employs very low cost technologies and uh, it also acts as a buffer during the dry seasons or in the drought problem solving areas. So th these, are, these are the some aspects in what way it makes the groundwater very important. So when you see about the different hydrological environments where the groundwater occurs, so just as the plants or the animals which say different environments, hydrogeological environment is also different where the water, the holding or the occurrence of groundwater differs in different areas. Some In some regions there will be more water and in some areas it will be less water. Mm -hmm. If you see this hydrogeological environment, we can see that the ancient crystalline and metamorphic uh, rocks are the environments where it is highly fractured, rocks are very highly fractured or weathered and its permeability, the capacity or the permeability and storage capacity are low and uh, the uh, coming to the, the prospective zones of groundwater in these environments, the fractures at the base of the deep weathered zone and the vertical fracture zones are the suitable areas for occurrence of this groundwater or the water holding capacity, aquifers we can call it as. And uh, coming to the consolidated sediments, that is the other environment of this, consolidated sediment aquifers, these are the large groundwater storage and marginal, major regional extension uh, different aquifers. And in this also we have the different types of aquifers based on the types of uh, rock formations like sandstone related rich rocks or mudstone or the limestones. So in this uh, sandstone, sandstone uh, related rocks environment, they are moderate to high potential yielding capacity of groundwater that is between 1 to 20 liters per second. And next is uh, the mudstone and shale and it is uh, occurs in the fractured or interwet between the sandstone layers, this mudstone occurs and its potential is very low that is between 0 to 0 0.5 liters per second. Coming to the high yielding uh, environment of this uh, consolidated sediment formation, that is uh, limestone. Uh, here uh, the, the exhibit is slightly soluble uh, in solubility in rainwater and fractures can form crust. Uh, topography relates to it as they are enlarged to develop conduits and fracture systems where we can say that it is the having the high potential zones for occurrence of the groundwater, maybe like potential for moderate to high occurrence between 1 to 100 liters per second. So this is the capacity and the other thing is the unconsolidated uh, sedimentary aquifers and uh, these are generally the loose material uh, that is where the groundwater stores and is transmitted through pore space and typically there is also a massive storage capacity for this and uh, it generally they have a regional large re regional conclave of, of occurrence. We can say that in the, they are the major alluvial and coastal basins where this unconsolidated sedimentary envir aquifer environment are present. In this uh, also we have the divisions like uh, major alluvial and coastal basins, small riverside deposits 
and also we have the valley deposits that generally occur between the mountain regions. In this uh, major alluvial and coastal basins, you have the high potential that is uh, uh, 1 to 40 liters per second their yield is and in this we have the major uh, sand and gravel which are being targeted for uh, groundwater in this type of uh, aquifers. And uh, comparing with this, uh, we have the very less uh, occurrence in this uncontaminated sedimentary uh, aquifer environments. That is the small riverside deposits where their yield is between 1 to 20 liter per second and uh, they have a moderate potential yield. And example, we can say that of the sand gravel deposited, targeted in the coastal dune areas. And the other important uh, deposit of this unconsolidated sedimentary aquifers is the valley deposits in mountain regions. So in this, the, they have the moderate to low potential and that is between 1 to 10 uh, liters per second. They have the yielding capacity and they, have, they are the stable areas of sand and gravel uh, as or interesting targets or when you seek, look for the groundwater in these areas, we have to target the sand and gravel areas in it. So this is about the importance of the different formations and uh, now uh, how the groundwater flows is being, will be uh, given uh, explanation regarding this will be given by Professor Baskar sir. Uh, thank you, Prashant, for explaining the different hydrological environments. Learners, by now you must be clear that porosity and permeability are important factors and through the pore spaces, groundwater moves through the fractures or the pore spaces. Now, from where does it go? From the recharge zone to the discharge zone. Recharge zone is normally in the upland areas and discharge zones are the spring, coastal areas, base flows, wetlands, etc. So this movement continues and aquifers are high, uh, they transform highly variable natural regimes into stable natural discharge regimes because they provide water continuously. Then it also results in groundwater residence times. If you see that the groundwater once it is inside, it can take decades uh, because of the slow movement. It can take decades uh, or even thousands of years uh, or centuries to even millennia to come out. So that is why we have the concept of fossil groundwater. And residence time of a groundwater will depend on the aquifer, on the geological formations that bear it. If you see the diagram on the screen, you can see that there are three uh, uh, cycles in this. One is water uh, getting from the recharge area in decades to the discharge area, another coming in centuries and another coming in millennia. And why these are occurring? It depends on the geological formations. And equiclude and equitard are the layers which block the movement of the water. And this is example you can see. One is of a semi-confined aquifer and second is unconfined aquifer. Now also it is important to assess the groundwater resources. How do we assess the groundwater resources? Observation of groundwater wells. Then we do the pumping test to understand the properties of the aquifers. Then hydrological investigations to build the concept about ge groundwater resource. Geophysical surveys to know where to site the or locate the bore wells where it has to be dug. Groundwater budgeting and modeling for accurate prediction and groundwater quality also needs to be assessed to protect groundwater resources. Now I would request my colleague Dr. Prashant to give an overview of the groundwater situation in India and also the associated environmental issues which are related. Thank you sir uh, for your nice description about the assessment of uh, groundwater resources. And coming to the overview of groundwater in India, we can say that uh, we have different, in geological terms, we have different formations like hard rocks and soft rocks, alluvial deposits. So here, uh, hard rock aquifers are generally present in the uh, peninsular India and this covers most part of the India. And uh, their uh, capacity is also very less, groundwater holding capacity. And we also have the alluvial aquifers in the Indo-Gangetic uh, plains and also on the other river basins. And uh, here in this, they are the promising uh, areas where you can get the good yield of groundwater. And uh, 
as comparing with the total uh, reserves or the resources which are present uh, in India, we have the 1,123 billion cubic meters per year of groundwater which is stored in Indian continent or in India. So out of this, we have a very uh, less uh, percentage which can be used. That is around uh, 398 billion cubic meters. So that is the capacity which can be yield. And uh, most of the water which is present, uh, that is rechargeable, that is which goes to the ground, in, is from the rainwater. And it accounts around 68%. Uh, there are also the other recharge uh, areas or the from where the groundwater is being uh, recharged. That is from the uh, other uh, areas like uh, the glacial melts. And these also cause the recharge of the areas. And there are also other some factors about the recharging capacity. And uh, in this, the irrigation break groundwater, the water overall percentage of water which is being uh, given to the ground in India, it is mostly, it is around 61.6 percentage. So in India, the groundwater uh, used for irrigation is around 61.6 percentage. And uh, mostly the, the water which groundwater which is being used is, is from the ore or the ore exploitation is in different states such as Delhi, Haryana, Punjab and Rajasthan. And these are the states where the usage of groundwater is more and the extraction is also more. So the extracted groundwater, as you can see the percentage as you told before, the irrigation for groundwater is 61 percentage, uh, 0.16 percentage. The extracted groundwater used for different purposes like for irrigation, domestic usage and for industrial purposes are used. In the extracted groundwater, uh, that is for irrigation is around 89 percentage and if for domestic uses, for a domestic, for even, for even drinking and other uses, it is in rural areas, it is more comparing with the urban areas, it comes around the 85 percentage. And uh, if you come to the urban areas, the groundwater used for uh, domestic purposes and also for drinking is around 50 percentage. Uh, when you come about the uh, more usage of this groundwater, we also th think of the sustainable development because judicious use of groundwater. And if you see here in the uh, map or in this slide, we can see here the, uh, the percentage of groundwater where the usage has increased for after the 1950, that is the starting of the Green Revolution. And if you see this, and it has uh, increased, comparing, comparing from 1950, it has increased to 2009, and it is being increased. And if you see the, uh, the usage of surface water, it was more before 1950 and during the 1950, and slowly the usage has been got decreased. And if you can see this graph, you can be showing. So in this also, you can see in the interestingly, this graph is also also showing. And in this also, the increased use of this wells and tube wells. And here we can see the increasing from zero level in 1950-51. And this is also increased to 2000 level and it is being increased. So this is because the food production has also increased. Simultaneously, there is a decreasing in the uh, usage of this surface water and the groundwater is more easily extracted. And this can be accounted because of the uh, low cost of this uh, credit can be given to this uh, irrigation equipment, irrigation equipment, and also subsidies given for the electricity and also the low power tariffs. So these are the main reasons. So we have to think about the groundwater uh, usage and if we are to make it use for the for future generations or the judicial use, we have to make it use. So next thing is what impacts the groundwater. Generally, now we have been talking about the climate change. Climate change is an important phenomenon. It is affecting every uh, uh, aspect in the sphere. And in the same time, groundwater is also being uh, affected. And here, in groundwater is more resilience to climate change because it, it, it has no direct effect on the groundwater. 
the climate change and it also has a good benefits also because groundwater acts as a buffer during the drought season direct drought season is generally maybe the effect of the climate change mostly so here uh, another important aspects also prior to industrialization uh, groundwater me was meagerly extracted and its quality was good and uh, because of this industrialization more use of fossil fuels and the resulted in climate change possibly and this also has an a, effect on the groundwater so also important thing about to discuss here about this the high temperature because of the climate change because they have the extremes of temperature uh, conditions and this reduces the soil moisture and reduces soil aridity and it causes relates uh, to the soil erosion and reducing infiltration so these are the some of the uh, implications of this uh, climate change on groundwater and it also has an uh, implication on the food security food security also again have uh, before saying about this we also have an uh, important aspect uh, relating to the climate change and also the sustainable development uh, the food food security here we can say that the groundwater uh, including the private tube and open wells it was a good source for irrigation during green revolution uh, with increasing in fruit production there was also in a, uh, the 200% of increase in food production due to this uh, the green revolution uh, and this also because of the uh, uh, more usage of the groundwater also and the, maybe you can say that the uh, the food, food revolution or the green revolution was successful mostly because of the uh, this uh, usage of groundwater at one point so other may all maybe other points are also there but uh, this because again this has led to the unsustainable irrigation practices uh, in mostly in the arid and semi arid regions and this has caused the crop failure due to the depletion of groundwater season and other factors are also the like climate change and other that's unsafe agricultural practices maybe like use of fertilizer pesticides soil nutrients affecting groundwater infiltration and quantity and here we can see the unsafe uh, practices or unsustainable irrigation practices in this figure you can see uh, so in not only the the human beings we also have the sustenance of the different ecosystems which depend on the groundwater they are uh, as discussed in the ramsar convention protection and conservation of wetlands act in 1971 so here also there are uh, groundwater dependent uh, ecosystems they survive on the dependent these are the aquatic as well as the uh, terrestrial they also depend on the uh, the groundwater in during the time of uh, refuge or the drought season so both flora and fauna are also dependent directly or indirectly so because of this thing this is called as the groundwater dependent ecosystems so there are also not only this ecosystems we are also have the cities are also being impacted by this groundwater depletion uh, we can say that the, uh, the groundwater acts as a buffer during the summer and uh, continues during the monsoon failure also continuous monsoon if there is in a continuous monsoon failure there is possibility of this uh, usage not only in the rural areas we also have the usage mostly in the urban areas also and uh, this industrialization and urbanization uh, also has caused the uh, changes in the groundwater availability and more usage of groundwater uh, another imp impact of this uh, the groundwater has the impact implications on the in situ sanitation practices in shallow aquifer because the shallow aquifers are uh, prone to this uh, effect and this causes a great threat because it is again used for many other many purposes uh, and also because of the modification in urban groundwater cycle declining water table subsidence rising water causes floods and this also has an uh, implicate and because of this this resilient cities is also an important aspect relating to the climate change is population growth urbanization so these are the things about this resilient cities uh, next uh, the important aspect is the groundwater quality which will be uh, explained by professor baskar sir uh, briefly there are two aspects one is it can be natural uh, contaminants or it could be uh, the human anthropogenic now natural uh, are called geogenic anthropogenic are industries uh, waste dumps all these things agricultural activities all these which result in 
Now, to give you an example, geogenic can be fluoride or uh, things like arsenic. And agriculture related, which already Dr. Prashant explained, it could cause nitrogen or other kind of uh, uh, contamination which are there, pesticide related, usage of pesticide. Now, there are different uh, things. If you see, iron contamination is reported from several states, chlorine salinity in uh, different uh, coastal areas, inland salinity in uh, certain states, Rajasthan, etc. Now, there are uh, certain mechanisms to conserve uh, and preserve the groundwater. One is effective regulatory mechanism. Second is enhancing community-supported management. Third is capacity building and institutional capacities of state monitoring agencies. Fourth is promoting sustainable irrigation practices and uh, judicious use of groundwater in urban water supply. And the last one is regulating agriculture power tariffs. Now, Prashanji, I would request you to sum up for the learners. So, thank you, sir. And uh, we had a good uh, discussion about the introduction to the groundwater. In this, we have covered about the overview of groundwater, its occurrence, and the different uh, terms relating uh, to this groundwater. Uh, and also, we also discussed about the uh, different uh, parameters of sustainable development relating to the groundwater and also the food uh, uh, sh shortage and other aspects of food revolution and relating to the different ecosystem, groundwater related ecosystems and its management and conservation. And uh, these are all the different uh, aspects which generally comes into the introduction of the groundwater. Uh, with this, uh, we will be ending the session. Thank you. Thank you very much.